is, of course, the unlimited spending without having enough controls, enough uh, checks and balances to see where that money is going, if it is being used wisely. In Indiana, we are in the final days of our legislative session. We are nearing the point where we must pass a, a budget. Usually by this time, I've heard that, well, we're getting close to an agreement on the budget. I haven't heard that yet. I thank God for our governor, our governor, because he is holding, while I don't agree with him on everything, he is holding very strong on our passing a balanced budget, a truly balanced budget, that doesn't depend on temporary funding that's coming from the federal government. When you do that, when you pass a budget that depends on temporary funding, what happens is, in two years, the legislature will be back here with a huge tax increase for all of us, for us to be able to continue programs or, or uh, things that we have spent this temporary money on. So I'm going to need your prayers, and, and uh, I just appreciate all of you being here today. Right now, one of my deep concerns is, you know our government was created with a system of checks and balances. Right now in Washington, with everything in the hands of, of one political party, we don't have a system of checks and balances. The only way that is going to happen is through the ballot box and being able to energize enough voters that they will see that we need some kind of accountability uh, in Washington. You have the power through the ballot box, and I urge you to, well, first of all, I want to thank you for coming here in a peaceful manner today to voice your concerns because we have this wonderful country that we wouldn't have today if we didn't have our veterans and our men and women in uniform who, as we speak, are protecting us. I hope that, uh, yes, please thank all of our veterans, our, our current service members, and their families. Because without you, there would be no United States of America. So I want to thank you again for having me here today. Please be involved. We need to take back our uh, government. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Americans have the right and advantage of being armed. Unlike the citizens of other countries whose governments are afraid to trust their people with arms. James Madison. Now I have the privilege Lisa and James Deaton from Columbus to speak. They've been married 27 years, have five children. They select schools for two younger children. Jim has a small business there in Columbus. They are also co-founders of the We the People, a grassroots organization in Columbus. Please welcome James and Lisa. Thank you. The first thing I would say to all of you folks is that I'm truly honored to be with all of you here today because if you do not come out of your houses, get away from watching the TV, and get involved, all of this is for nothing. Thomas Jefferson said, honor, justice, and humanity. Forbid us tamely to surrender that freedom which we received from our Gabbian ancestors and which our innocent posterity have a right to receive from us. We cannot endure the infamy and guilt of resigning succeeding generations to that wretchedness which inevitably awaits them if we basely entail hereditary bondage on them. 
Uh, this is everything that I believe. And I have to tell you, where I started at is being a mom at home who did, like some of our other speakers said, I complained at the TV, I complained at my family, I complained to my friends. And one day I looked in the mirror and I thought, you know what, I'm complaining to the wrong person because I vote and so I'm as much of the problem as our elected officials because we put them in there. And so we have to be held responsible for doing that. And since we put them in there, we need to take them out. What I would encourage you today to think about, guys, is how many people that are in our higher levels of office could we have eliminated if we were more involved in our cities and more involved in our states? Some of these people, unlike maybe President Obama, they did not come out of nowhere and someone find them and give them a lot of money. They started small. And if we had paid attention to what they said and were doing, we might have seen some of this stuff coming way back when, and we could have eliminated some of this. But with that said, we got to start somewhere. So I challenge you all today to start really getting involved. This is a great step. And, and we need to support each other in any community because the numbers speak to the elected officials. They look and they think, ah, oh, they're gathering today, but if they never, never gather again, we know how often they forget about us too. So you have to keep reminding them every day how mad you are. And part of that is getting involved in your community. Show up at all the city council meetings. It doesn't matter if you know what they're talking about. Get there and learn what they're trying to sell on you. We have a small issue in Columbus that's just about trash pickup. Someone might think, why do I need to worry about trash pickup? Because if they're doing something to you in a small way, there's a bigger plan behind it. You've got to know what your rights are and what liberties are that you have and what they're trying to take away from you under the pretense that it's only going to cost you a dollar more a month. It's my money. It's not theirs. They need to tighten their belt. They're making me do it. They ought to do the same thing. I would encourage you guys, find groups to talk to. It doesn't matter if all you're doing is reading the 5,000-year leap so you can learn what our founding fathers meant. Educate yourself. Most of the people that you talk to don't remember what their constitutional freedoms are. How do they know what they're losing if none of them know what they have the right to? you got to get involved. You have to join groups. You've got to march. You've got to protest. You've got to speak up. And you cannot get lazy, and I don't mean that rudely, but folks, if they tell you today it was a good day and the stock market went up, you know what? That was only one day. Don't believe it. Don't get conditioned to believe that everything amounts to what just happened on one day. They, it took a long time to put us in this toilet, and it's going to take a while to climb out of it. So you guys, please. Find somebody to leech on to. Go out there and do something. And take this back for our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren because I know that you probably agree with me. My babies are more important than to be given this crud to deal with. And I am not a very good parent or citizen of this country if I would allow them to have to deal with this crud because I sat at home and did nothing at all. You all have power. It doesn't matter what form you use it in, but please get up and do something to save this country. Thank you for listening to me. This guy's my husband that's coming up, James D. Folks, I want y'all to give a big hand of applause to the folks that put this thing together for us here. Um, what I wanted to come and, and get you guys to realize is uh, I wanted to talk to you about this this uh, uh, this out of control spending that, that uh, the United States government is currently uh, uh, undertaking. And uh, if you take the, the national debt, which is somewhere around eleven trillion dollars right now and climbing all the time, uh, and I look for a way to try to express this to you people as to what that really means. Um, if you take the city of Greensburg, Indiana, this wonderful city with all these wonderful people in it, it has about 10,000 people. 